Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, coming to you from Whitman Regional Airport at Oshkosh 2023. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Women Venture draws a crowd again. Joby Sims sets the agenda for future air vehicle training. Kit Fox has a new rough and ready landing gear. These stories and more coming up in today's special edition of Airborne Unlimited. Women Venture draws a crowd again. At Oshkosh, the WAI and 99's communities, among others, have proven that women have more than the right stuff. They are the right stuff. I got my first uh, flight in 1970, and I got my pilot license in 72, a uh, commercial CFI AMP in 74, and, and nobody wants to hire a female for any of those jobs. And then fast forward, my daughter has all the same ratings, and then the next generation, my granddaughter has the same ratings, and my granddaughter is facing the same problems that I had 40 years prior. Nothing has changed in 40 years. Girls in flight training uh, started in 2011. The idea is, A, what are the obstacles that are preventing women from being successful? And would an all-female environment work in today's world? And it absolutely does work. And for the women overcoming the fears, the confidence issue, even the ergonomics. Uh, most of those obstacles will start falling away because we will dominate the industry. Oshkosh to me is part of my origin story. I think the last time I was here I was 11 years old and this is where that aviation seed was planted in me. I walked by a booth and I saw the image of those four pistol packing mamas on a B-17 and I knew that I needed to be one of them. Here I am, 20-something years later, now talking to young girls and teens and women who are interested in aviation, and it just really is so fulfilling. I think a whole lot of us came here just for the mentorship and being able to meet young female aviators and all aviators of all ages, but being able to talk about our experiences and show them how accessible it can be to people from all walks of life. So we're just here to hopefully inspire them a little bit. So I came to Girl Venture um, like just curious about all the different careers. I thought, okay, this will help me narrow down. This will help me figure out what I want to do. But no, it's the opposite. There's more to aviation than just being a pilot. I learned so much. I really enjoy just getting to talk to girls my age that were also interested in aviation because it was so exciting for me. Like we made call signs for everyone in our group and that is something I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Girl Venture has probably been one of the coolest experiences I've had. I think one was enough for me because now I'm ready to go out and explore and see what I can do and that's my plan. Joby Sim sets the agenda for future air vehicle training. How do you train the next generation of aviators to prepare for aircraft that are unlike anything they've flown before? You simulate it. Here in Joby Aviation's trailer with Greg Bowles of Joby Aviation, talking about their simulator and what the EV tall market looks like for Joby in the future. So Greg, first, thank you very much for uh, taking the opportunity to speak with us. We are at the birth of the electric age of aviation, and it's a time we all need to lean in and make sure the policy structure is supportive and gonna help us all succeed. We first flew our full-scale all-electric EV toll back in 2017, uh, and we began doing transition flights and, and lots of flights around the airspace. Um, for several years, we flew those first-generation aircraft. Uh, we built a second-generation aircraft that we've been flying for many years, since about 2019. Um, and today, recently, we've rolled off the, the final generation of the aircraft. The production-type aircraft are coming off the line. Um, we're starting to work with the Air Force to position those aircraft for logistical work. Uh, early next year, you'll start to see um, really exciting things happening um, on the DOD side and we're racing towards uh, civil operations in 2025. So in 2025, uh, we, you know, just two short years away, we'll all be able to start operating these aircraft and flying on these aircraft. Um, and I can't wait to, uh, for the ability to fly here at Oshkosh. At Joby, we're really vertical. So we began this business when there wasn't much of a supply chain, when there wasn't much belief that electric aircraft could even get off the ground. And so we had brought an internal team um, from, from the traditional surface EV world, uh, from aviation, from traditional tech, um, all together. And through that integrated approach, we've built a very vertical company where we make our own motors, we make our own batteries, we make our own electronics and the airframe. Uh, and we're doing flight tests every single day. 
uh, out in Marina, California. And we'd love folks to come watch through the fence every time we're flying out there. Um, and more and more aircraft are getting into the airspace. And uh, you know, the reality, uh, our reality as aviators is gonna continue to evolve over the next decade. Um, and what's really exciting is, you know, the huge crowds here at Oshkosh are really exciting. This is going to be just a little dot compared to what aviation is going to look like over the next decade. More and more people coming into aviation, more and more excitement. Um, and I, I think Oshkosh may have to expand the footprint uh, in order to, to fit everybody. Kit Fox has a new rough and ready landing gear. A Kit Fox can go just about anywhere, and sometimes that means really rough turf, but a new offering makes it possible for the iconic Kit Fox to go just about anywhere. One of the things that we have introduced this year is the uh, Kit Fox Cabane V gear, which we've had for a while. Uh, you may recognize it from the uh, radial engine that we did back in 2010. We changed over to a uh, nitrogen-filled shock. Since then, we've revolved over to the Acme Aerofab shock called Black Ops. Phenomenal uh, change, uh, a pretty decent upgrade in our opinion. The system itself um, maintains its ride height, which is really nice. You're not getting sag in the, le in the gear legs and displacement with camber caster. It gives a firm grip on the ground when you're doing it, it absorbs the energy. It's a nitrogen filled shock, but it also has a safety feature into it. They, they manufacture their own coil spring that goes inside the shock as a backup system. So in the event that you've lost nitrogen or knocked a Schrader valve off and blew out all the oil and everything else, your ride height probably won't change much and the airplane's still safe to operate for landing and taking off. It is a certified STC shock. The testing on it's been up to 27,000 pounds in tension. Kit Fox Cabane V gear with the Acme Aero shocks is actually standard on the STI. It's optional on our Super Sports and it is retrofittable back into the Series 5 and the Series 6 and the Series 7 airplanes. We also added the, the Acme Aerofab Stinger, which is kind of a similar setup for the tailwheel shock. And that's been working out really well. Um, and there's some more exciting things coming on that venture. And coming up after these messages, Association of Professional Warbird Operators visits OSH 23. This is a demonstrator of our new AVHSI accessory for the AV30. The AVHSI adds precision vertical and lateral guidance, allowing the AV30 to be used to fly instrument approaches, both ILS and GPS approaches, down to LPV minimums. The AVHSI is compatible with all the leading GPS on the market. This is an Avidyne IFD 540 uh, that will work with all the Garmin series as well. I think it's a very important thing to share the joy and love of flying. Our customers fly to remote places. They use our products to go places that are difficult to get to. Hearts has been an excellent partner for Whip Air, uh, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demands. And it is that shared experience and the joy of flying that brings us all back and charges all of our batteries up. Welcome back. If you've seen something especially cool around Oshkosh so far, please let us know with hashtag Osh23Cool. We'd love to check it out. Association of Professional Warbird Operators visits Osh23. Our good friend John Lights Leanhouts presented the newly formed Association of Professional Warbird Operators to the AirVenture community and started listing what this aggressive program is planning to do on behalf of the historic treasures that they protect. 
Lights looks like you're back at doing God's work. <laughs> yes, sir, I sure am. And I'm feeling great about it. It's a wonderful place to be because it's, it's the heart and soul of America is the American air, air power. And that's one of the things that got me into the business at the very beginning back in 1966. And now here I still am. And I'm doing this almost out of the, out of the kindness of my heart to make this happen. It's a give back. The Association of Professional Warbird Operators, what is it? Okay, it's an overarching organization that's designed to bring all the community together, all the EAA, AOPA, CAF, uh, Gamma, all the people that fly and operate warbirds, is to bring them together with common cause of survivability, sustainability, and a voice into the Congress and a voice into the FAA so we can manage regulation, keep airplanes flying with good safe practices, and to keep airplanes on the ramp in front of the public so the world can continue to see the greatest treasure we've ever created in the world and that was the air power of America. There was a lot of naysayers when we first got going. That's to, to be expected because they didn't want another alphabet soup kind of organization. But once they realized that we're here for them, that we're not taking anything away from any of the organizations, we want them to still thrive and, and to have people join all the different uh, Warbird organizations. They're realizing that we bring a great value because we're consolidating what good ideas from each one of those organizations and putting them into a comprehensive standardized group of uh, policies and procedures that we'll recommend everybody do and then hopefully at the end of the day we'll reduce the number of accidents and at the same time we we'll become insurable and we stop regulation from the FAA. Go Go Business Aviation keeps aviation in touch with the rest of the world. It's hard to keep up with GoGo, -Go. whether you refer to their 5G products or the SAT system that has the potential to connect the aviation world. Let's check in with them to see what's up, literally. So grateful to be here again uh, this year and uh, just an amazing environment of different manufacturers and people all interested in aviation. So it's just a great spot to be. Um, as you kind of mentioned, Jim, so technology just changes and it's changing faster and faster every single year. GoGo -Go as, a, as a leading innovator of that technology, especially in the air to ground communication space, you know, our challenge and our goal is to always stay a step ahead of that and that's how we innovate. We, we look at the trends that is happening, uh, we look at trends on the ground, trends on the aircraft, and we try to keep pace of what that's going to look like a year from now, two years from now, and develop our technologies now so we can meet that puck where it's going to be versus where it's at. That's a key fundamental strategy of ours. GoGo -Go Galileo is a, the next iteration for that for us. So we are partnered with Hughes in our antenna technology and OneWeb with the satellite technology. And uh, we're very excited about this product because it'll offer true LEO global satellite coverage on virtually any size aircraft. And that's one of the reasons we're here. GoGo -Go Galileo can fit on anything from the small jet to the, the turboprop all the way up to the large uh, aircraft. So we, we're going to have a product line that'll fit all of those different needs and being able to do that globally. And we're very excited to serve those customers with connectivity that, quite frankly, they've never really had access to this kind of performance before. So, yeah, our, our goal is to offer solutions on, on different networks and different platforms um, that will work for everybody. Get ready for cuteness overload with the Pedal Plane Parade. There are so many words to describe Oshkosh. Awesome, inspiring, cool, insane, loud, crazy, crowded, and cute. Yep cute. One of the more enjoyable spectacles that dot the Oshkosh landscape is the annual formation flight and gathering of an amazing cadre of pedal planes powered by today's aviation inspired kitties. They have it all. Cubs, Stearmans, P-51s, you name it. And rendered in miniature form so that the flyers of tomorrow can do a little dreaming and maybe get enough inspiration that they'll be flying the skies with tomorrow's aircraft. No one really knows what ignites the spark that helps a child want to be a pilot or other type of aviation professional, but we do know that this is an incredibly good start. And a visual feast for them, their parents, and anyone who happens to glimpse wave after wave of aero tykes enjoying the chance to form up and take flight. And coming up after these messages, our partners at GoGo -Go Business Aviation are happy to help us bring you another interview segment in which Jack talks about another serious subject, the future of aviation fuels, and he has some interesting insights. Martha, do you know how many years we've been going to Oshkosh for AirVenture? Well, I'm not exactly sure, John, but I am glad you brought that up. We're coming up on the 50th anniversary of King Schools. What are we going to do to celebrate? First of all, we're heading back to Oshkosh for AirVenture to have fun with all of our aviation friends. Plus, you can take 23% off any King Schools course. Just use the code words. 50 years at kingschools.com or you can call us and use the same code words 
50 years. Over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. This next segment is brought to you by our friends at GoGo Go Business Aviation. Today is part three of our Jack Pelton interview extravaganza, which deals with a tough subject, the future of aviation fuel. Here, Jack explains some of the difficulties he sees for this major concern. We had two companies that um, got certifiable fuels together, and yet there's this con Eagle Consortium and so forth out there dictating certain concerns and certain paths and this, that, and the other. Uh, at the same time, GAMI's kind of sitting out there all alone twiddling its thumbs to a certain extent. Same thing with SWIFT. What's right, what's wrong about how we're approaching all this right now? I, I guess I, would, I wouldn't view them as twiddling their thumbs. Gam, GAMI has a fuel. I mean, they have a fuel that was certified through the mm -hmm. STC process. And knowing those guys, they got it right. They, I believe they got it right also. I think what they're finding is that that's only part of the equation to get it, to what I keep saying, co commercialization of the fuel. And it's the petroleum companies that dictate the downstream process. And I think that's where the struggle has been is, there's a lot of perspectives and things you could, you could say about it, but let's take the, the, the things that are the truths. The fuel works, it's good, it's out there, or it's ca capable of being produced. For some reason, and part of this is the whole process of how many fuels can I have on an airport? Is it economical to have dual storage? Is, it, is anybody willing to cut over and actually just replace 100 low lead with it in the same, same tank? But somebody's got to produce it and make it available. And, and that's where, as a, as a third party to that, I just don't understand what's going on at the petroleum companies. And I, I still think we need them really at the table saying, tell us the rules of engagement. What is it going to take to get this fuel available everywhere? Are they willing to talk? I don't know. I do not know. These are companies that are publicly traded that are worth billions of dollars and a decision on cutting over to a new fuel that hasn't been done in God knows how many you know years back to the, the 30s and 40s is a big, big discussion in the boardroom. They're going to make sure that there is absolutely no landmines and that they can avoid any liability issues. And the one way to avoid the liability issues is to have an ASTM standard because it opens up the door to get the liability issue off of the fuel producers and then they can go to town. That, that part for me has just been the frustrating piece of the whole thing. And tomorrow, our friends at GoGo -Go Business Aviation present part four of the nonstop coolness of our Pelton interview series. Jack expounds on what is happening or not with today's FAA. So I think this is, a, this is something that has to be fixed immediately. And, and I know I'm certainly pressing any elected officials that will listen to me is to, guys, get your act together and, and don't let this be um, you know, political fodder for other issues. Go get it solved. It's a national national issue. And that about wraps up our day three here at Oshkosh 2023. If you're watching us on YouTube, please do subscribe and go check out our other social media. Don't forget you can get 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation news at aero-news.net. We'll see you back here tomorrow.